out loud to the greatest Champions League goal ever. Normally when you come on as a substitute, the first thing you think, let, let's make me first touch just a safe one, a decent one. You know, have a good start and drop it off to somebody else and get yourself going in the game. Lars Ricken comes on in a European Cup final and his first touch is to do this. Well, I reckon, uh, if you know, he's taken a scoring goal, but he's a midfield player. It's not unheard of for players to score with their first touch after coming on as substitutes, but to come on as a substitute in a Champions League final and to score with your first touch from outside the penalty area with an audacious strike come log uh, is a bit special. And uh, Lars Ricken has achieved some said that not many will equal. For me, it's, it's a great goal in the sense that it's his first touch in the game. He's a young boy and he does the job very well. What an easy job. What a poor piece of goalkeeping by Andrew O'Keefe. The most overrated goalkeeper I've ever seen. He doesn't blast it. He actually provides a, you know, a consummate finish. Um, it, it must be pretty much the way that he dreamt it the night before. I um, still think he shouldn't play the touch, though. I've never heard of him since. You know, I've never heard of this guy uh, since, and, and, and I don't know if he's still playing, I don't know what he's doing. All I know is he's got one of the most unique goals we've seen in Champions League football because uh, it's, uh, uh, to say it's unorthodox, the way he finishes it is an understatement. He's sure. Well, he's been sent off for attempting something so outrageous that he did attempt the corridor, and that he pulled it off was just exceptional. You look at the replay, and you need to look at the replay before you fully comprehend what he's done there. It's brilliant improvisation because it's, as I say, the ball, he, he's, he's ahead of the ball, and he somehow manages to, to hook it over his own shoulder and go flying into the, uh, to the, to the near post. Uh, never again. Yeah, good build up, good goal, but a bit too tension, I like it. I'm not sure. There's anyone else who pulled this off. Maybe it's Henri on a good Thierry Henry on a good day, but uh, it just shows Ronaldinho so special and, and maybe the sad thing for him is his goal didn't actually count for him. Jeremy's header only as far as Iniesta. Now Ronaldinho. Oh, it's a terrific goal! A wonderful, wonderful goal! You're standing front on, 22 yards out, completely close down, against the best defence in the world, backed by the best goalkeeper in the world. And all of them, and all of with Mourinho's judges in position. In a split second, he just decides without hardly any back lift. You know, he doesn't have to drop the shoulder, he doesn't move. The ball's between his feet, and he just literally toe ends it. I remember sitting with my dad, um, watching a rewind of that goal, and said, ah, so we toe poke. I said, yeah, and nobody else would even think about scoring a goal like that. The vision about it was immense. It is frightening in as much as he actually saw a gap he knew that he couldn't get a proper strike on it, but he kind of did. That's what it was. It was like a magic trick. It was like it, it, it was like he'd he beaten the eye somehow. It's like he he you know pulled a fast one on it. It's, it's like a flea, you know, where, where's, oh, it's in the back of the net. It shows that attack in triangle was the very best of them. And I don't know about you, but I love to see that. Ask anybody in five or ten years' time who Mao Dressen is, and they won't be able to tell you. Then show them this goal and say, Oh, yeah, he was the guy. Oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, it's incredible. That's the other one. Dressen. Oh, my word, that's stunning. It was a goal of such incredible timing, talent, vision, skill. Anything you like. Listen, if Mauro Bresson goes 
to the grave with just that inscribed on his headstone, then I think he'd probably be a happy man. The other thing that strikes me about Mauro Bresson was that aside from his great goal, he then had an assist in the same game that people tend to forget for a goal by Chiesa. It was almost as impressive. Mauro Bresson, wherever you are, thanks for that. Thing. Who doesn't remember that goal? Uh, it was just majestic from, from the maestro. It is for me the, the best European Champions, Champions League goal I've seen. We've got a list of, of the many, many great goals, but I think clearly the idea is to score a great goal in the biggest game, and um, Zidane's is the perfect perfect combination of uh, a great player, great occasion, and uh, just a stupendous finish. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, and it was. I mean, that's my favourite Champions League goal. Um, there are better team goals, but that is the best piece of individual skill for a goal in Champions League history. If you ask anybody the essence of Zinedine Zidane, it will be this goal. Roberto Carlos. Solari. Good ball for Roberto Carlos. Puts into the penalty area towards Zidane! Oh, fantastic! Everything completely poised and ready. All we had half an hour to get ready. <laughs> the way it dropped from the sky, I mean, I think there are even professional players who would have struggled to hit it, never mind connect it with their left foot and then stick it in the top corner. It's almost like it happens in slow motion. Do you know why? Oh, it's almost it was like the Matrix. You know, when somebody's shooting the bullets and they're coming really slow. It was like the ball was just slowing down as it comes down. The fact that he got his left foot, which is supposedly his weakest, to make the connection with the ball. And the high that his foot was, the ball travelled that exact this, that exact height all the way into the back of the net. It was almost like football in all coming together. Goals like Zidane, Ronaldinho stand out because you know you can see that these are you know, precision precision finishes. We wear that kind of brilliant, like an expensive suit. That goal against Leverkusen was immense. It was just one of those um, moments that you stop. You look, you think, have I really seen that? And then you see it on the replay and you think, privilege. There's just so much beauty in football um, uh, that uh, I think the fact that he scored it you know, even better. And uh, at the time he was the best player in the world. So it's the number one goal, the number one player. Um, and so it has to be number one to go. So the brilliant Zizou, Zinedine Zidane, is top of the lot. The 2002 final at Hampden Park. The perfect stage for what is considered the perfect body. Now we hope you've enjoyed this look back at our top 50 goals in the Champions League. Of course, it's all a matter of opinion. I'm sure some of you might have very different views to that of our panel. Whatever your thoughts, though, this last hour has been a fantastic celebration.